Good evening. This is Mary Lou Foster. I am an independent stamping up demonstrator in Sulphur Springs, Texas. And I am coming on to show you my next card class to go. It uses the horse and sleigh bundle. It's an online exclusive. I'm just making sure all of my turn off. Nope. I thought I would be able to turn off the auto translation, but not so much. Alright. If you are watching, if you don't mind commenting that you're here, that helps me out a lot um, to know that there's someone watching. This class is one that you can get for free. A card class for free. You're like, what? Yes. The way you get this class for free is placing an online order for a minimum of $35 in my online store. I will post links and more in the description. And that there's a host code that is associated with that. I will also post that. I have a blog post already created, so I'll add the link so you can go read it. That's probably the best way to get all the information. But with your $35 minimum order, you will get this card class delivered to you in the mail. What you will get is six cards. There are three different designs I'm going to show you tonight. Two of each. So you'll get the card bases. You'll get the paper already cut. You get um, the extra pieces of cardstock. I do not provide stamped images, that's policy for stamping up, and the die cut pieces. If it's a die that is not in this bundle, here are the dies that are in the bundle, I'll provide those. But like this horse and sleigh, I am not going to die cut that. You probably are going to want the stamps and the dies, the bundle. It's the horse and sleigh bundle. The paper is called One Horse Open Sleigh. They like to kind of do that sometimes. But um, the images, we're going to use nearly every stamp. And there would be a way to work those in. I just didn't do it this time. I'll, I'll use this one in um, my card classes, local card classes. I do have uh, monthly in-person card classes in my home. My next one is August the 31st. Um, if you aren't on my email list, you need to sign up for my email list. That's the best way to stay current, stay up to date. I send out emails before all of my events and let you know the dates and the times and the costs and all that good stuff. So, look what came in the mail today. As a Stamping Up demonstrator, we get to see the new catalogs early. I cannot show you anything on the inside. I can show you the outside. I'm not breaking any rules by doing this. You too can see this stuff early by joining my team. If that's something that you would like to do, just message me, email me, text me, comment on this post that, hey, I'd like some more information about how to get to see things before everyone else. My big pre-order arrived today. I have not had time to even open the box yet. I'm dying to open the box, but first I have to do this video. So let's get started. The first card uses the stamp. This is a large stamp. I've got my centimeter size up. But let's measure this little puppy here. So the block itself is five and seven eighths. And that stamp almost covers that entire block. It's over five inches long. So that's why I turn this card horizontally or landscape, whichever that you prefer. And I am going to go ahead and stamp 
this image some tickle in my leg. Better not be a spider on the piece of cardstock that I have provided in the kit. When I do these classes, I always use the kits that I have already prepped a few because I know for sure I've got to have one or two of them prepared. And I'm going to need to re ink that. Um, let me get a different one. It's not wanting to ink up solidly, it's kind of blotchy. It's the thing about photopolymer. See, I can see what it's doing. Can you see how, like, on his bridle, it's just not solid enough. We use these um, ink pads a bunch. Have no fear, I have one more. It's, I keep this one pretty well inked because it's the one I use. No. It's not going to matter on here. I'm going to die cut it, but I kind of want to leave it in the center. You know, with photopolymer stamps, sometimes you do get a better image if you will stamp it on a piercing mat. Remember, these photopolymer do not have that uh, cushiony layer that our red rubber stamps have. And I want to be sure it gets stamped in the middle. That's why I'm really giving it a bad time. See how nice that is? And I'm going to clean this. This is the only uh, card that I used this big stamp on. We've already used it in a class, but I used the die. And we just die cut it out of a solid uh, I think it was Misty Moonlight. I don't have those cards right here by me to even show you. But it turned out really pretty. And I know sometimes just sitting there watching people color is kind of a mindless thing to do. This uh, peach pie, I love peach pie. No, I mean pecan pie. Well, it started with a P, you know what I meant. I don't know much about the horse um, bridles and all that good stuff, so I just kind of made it up. I'm going to color my horse um, Smoky Slate. I always like to start with the light. Everybody has their own opinion about that. If you've never colored with the Stampin' Blends, you just don't know what you're missing. Because you can layer on colors. We still try to not color outside the line. They bleed ever so slightly. So you don't have to go right up to the black line if you don't want to. It's easier to go back and gently fill it in if you need to. And his mane, you know, they're not solid. My brother has horses. And I can't tell them apart. My grandkids come and they go, oh, that's Jake, or that's Will, or and I'm like, uh-huh. I'm like, how can you even tell from here? They can. Just like my brother can. Kind of how parents know their kids, you know. We had a little black cat came up to our house and she had four kittens. I called them repeat, 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 and repeat, because actually there was one of them that had white spot on its belly, but you had to turn it over to see the white spot. Otherwise, they were black cats, and she's a black cat. And I'm like, well, thank you very much for that. Giving them, giving them away, and um, something happened to the ones that we were going to keep. I have a feeling either a coyote or an owl or maybe a dog. We don't really have dogs that run loose in our community here where we live. See, you can just add some highlights. I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing this. And 
and then the sleigh, I'm gonna do it. Let's use the brushing, because it's big. <coughs> Pecan pie. And like I said, I always start with the light and add my shadows. So it may be that the dyes, I needed to check that before I came on, are on back order. And if they are, if you're interested in this card class for free and that's what you would like to get, because with your order over $50, I will send you a roll of ribbon. That's what I've decided the uh, extra gift is. Or the snowflakes, depending. I kind of know um, the, one of my ladies, she already has the snowflakes, so she's going to get a roll of ribbon. But if you don't have the snowflakes yet, and you won't because they're also these online exclusives. A little bit of copper there. Let's color the gentleman's coat. I decided he needed a deep, rich, green coat. And I'm not real good sometimes on figuring out what they mean when they design these silly things, what I need to color. And then I think she has a lab probe of some kind right here. She does now on mine. And I think I decided this was the other side of the sleigh. Sometimes I have a hard time imagining. And I only want the bullet end because this part is a little bitty. Anyway, if this is uh, something that you're interested in getting and you want that bundle and those dies are on back order, let me know and I'll work with you on uh, waiting for them. Let me see. I did his hat red. Part of it anyway. And I did I don't know exactly what this is. And I did not pull the color that I colored hers. How about if we do light misty moonlight for her um, coat? not the exact same color I colored originally. I was going to show you another piece of the designer series paper when I get to that part that I thought would be really nice. And then I gave her a pool party hat. That's one of the colors that coordinates with this package of paper. And how about if we do his glove? And I didn't color their faces. So in order to make this card, I am going to need to die cut it. And I'll show you my little trick. So they say, see these little holes? That, well, I thought there were little black dots there. One of them, they have little black dots that line up in those little holes. This is not the one though. But I can see the, the reins. And it does cut out some openings down here in the runner. I'm going to hold that in place. Now that I have it where I think it needs to be. And I'm going to tape it. And I'll put this up under your face. So you can see it come out. your sandwich and you know you can look at the instructions. I'll show you how to get it out. Because it tells you what 
um, order you need insert that's an embossing folder and I'm using the gray plate because the white plate did not provide uh, satisfactory results for my little die cutting machine my mini die cutting emboss machine and once I started using that gray platform night and day difference well, let's see what we got I always hold my breath cross my fingers to make sure that just looks pretty good I went ahead and um, did my inside, mounted that. I'll stamp it when I do my stamping. The cool thing about this card, the stamping is done directly onto the designer series paper. Oh, how about that? And this is cut with the teeny tiniest of borders. Because the card base is cut at five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And I cut this paper four and one eighth by five and three eighths. So that gives me just this little bitty edge, a mat that just kind of peeks out underneath it. We're going to add some dimensionals and dimensionals. Just add pop it up off the card base. And yes, I know I haven't done my stamping yet. This is not going to get in the way. And you can put that on high or low. Wherever you like to put it. Sending warmth your way. I thought that was a really nice because, you know, they're all wrapped up, going on a sleigh ride. They might not be the warmest in the world. You're sending warmth their way. So you want to make sure that your ink pad is well inked. It's just black memento. And on the inside, we I did not put um, a sentiment, but I'm going to say wishing you a season of cheer. And then you can hand write Merry Christmas. I like to do that anyway. Wishing you a season of cheer. And we'll use this greeting on, on the outside of one of the cards. Okay. So that, my friends, is the first card. Let me show you the alternate um, paper that I thought would make this card really pretty. That pack of paper has all these wonderful seams. And I thought, oh, that would be nice too. The thing about it, you wouldn't be able to stamp your words because there's a lot of trees. But you could certainly use a... I have one laying here. What I did with it. A flag type. Uh, here it is. Die cut. And put that up there. So I'm not going to do that one right now. Go. That's card number one. Let's clean up this disposal. Then um, these adhesive backed snowflake assortment, and they call it an assortment because there are three different colors, three different sizes. Let's see if I can get this out of the package. Can't be smarter than the package. And I just did white. I wanted it to have a little bit of sparkle, but not overpower the card. My caution is, be sure when you're getting yours off, that you also get the little sticky dot. They're not going to stick without the sticky dot. So, I use... Sure, I do. There it is. A 
piercing tool. And yes, we don't sell those anymore. We have the You Pick It tool. Mine's here on my table somewhere. Let's do that one. Let's do this one. Um, put it right there. And let's put a small one. How about right here? We'll put them in a different place. I'm going to lay these aside because we're going to use them on the other cards. Now, a fun fold card. Thank you. I love this cute little deer just watching through the woods. See, we're going to send warmth away again. There's probably um, wishing you a season of cheer. We used it and a happy new year. Didn't really want to use it, but you certainly could. And then joyful and sending warmth your way. So because you're going to be making these yourself at home, you don't have to worry about someone um, needing the stamps in another or another card. Now this one has a lot of pieces. But wait till I show you the inside. I said it's a fun full card. So it's, it's a bit different with this um, extra page. You would write your sentiment and Merry Christmas or whatever. I did not get out any other stamps because you're making them at home. You are free to use whatever you would like. So this card is cut five and a half by, let me see, I got it right here, 11. And it's scored at four and a quarter, five and a half, and six and three quarters. The good thing about this, if you decide you want this card class for free, you will get PDF instructions on um, the day that I plan to mail them, the 14th, Monday the 14th. I will email you to let you know that they are on their way and give you the PDF instructions. So, in your kit, you'll already have your paper cut to the right size. And for the inside, you're going to want to go ahead and stick that fold right here. You're going to want to go ahead and adhere that together. Whether you use tear and tape something that's a uh, good sturdy adhesive. It won't take a lot of stress, I mean as far as some fold cards, but you do want it to stay folded. Alright, let's put this one on. And the cool thing about this paper then, there's like a graphic design on the back of it. Totally unexpected. This one is a green, probably mossy meadow. This one is cut with just kind of the traditional four and a quarter by, no, four by five and a quarter. And for the inside of mine tonight, I decided to do this house. Because I, you know, um, I couldn't find another piece that had the wood grain. My packages get very well used. So I had to call an audible. So I decided. I'm like, you know what? When they open this card, it'll be a fun scene inside there. And then you've got this piece that goes along this spine. I think this is a, maybe a kind of a book fold, but not exactly. It has a name, but no, I don't know what it is. And this is the edge that I cut off right here. So that's a way to use the entire sheet of paper. Because remember I cut it five and a quarter so this is three fourths of an inch and it's going to fit right here on this one inch piece perfectly with a little border around it. How cute is that? Alright, let's go back to the front and stamp sending 
work your way could stamp that in early espresso, but I'm just going to stamp it in black. And the reason it's it's easy enough to read, it would be fine in early espresso. But I don't know where my early espresso is. Now, before I stop, you may have noticed there's a detail in here, and it is stamped in early espresso. I can reach that. Let me get it. And I'm going to use a different tree. When I made mine, there are two trees in this stamp set, and I just grabbed the wrong one. But for the card tonight, I'm going to grab the other one. I'm going to get it inked up. You don't want it to take up a whole lot of room if you're going to write very much. That is just a fun little detail to add to your card. Set, you have these snow drifts, and you also have um, a die that would have cut out that tree that I just stamped. Fits perfectly. Can you see that? Probably not. That cuts out that tree. And then in the stamp set, there's kind of the twiggy tree, and that would be this one. Or, if you wanted, and we're going to do this on the other card, uh, just the branches. This is the bunny, and there is the stamp. This is some detail that you can add to your runners on your sleigh. And this is a little detail that you can add to the sleigh also. I think I moved those out of the way. So, that's what's in the dies. And you just kind of build this how you, sort of how you want to. Like that. Put that in. Now, let me show you the secret then for how to put adhesive on these little skinny pieces. If you use, whoops, like a silicone mat or a piece of plastic, you can run that adhesive on the back of these little bitty pieces like this. And then I just kind of use my finger to gently coax those pieces of sticky around to the back. And I'm not going to stick that on real firmly. I want to go ahead and put this one on <coughs> and run it up underneath it. Kind of like that. And yep, that'll work. This one is just also mounted flat on the card front. Looks good. Oh, I'm done a little too low. You can walk your way. I need to pull it up a little. See if I can get it out. Oh, I did. There. I need it too far down. It's almost too far up now. 
And for this one, I used the copper. Because I thought it needed a little bit more color. So we have the big guy. And he's going to go. How about if we just kind of tuck him up underneath there? Right there. And this one. Let's put him right there. I don't know why they're him. And let's put that one right there. And we're ready to adhere this on that flap. And I just do it far enough over so kind of the width of my adhesive here. Go like that. That, my friends, is all there is to that card. The paper does the work. That's the nice thing about this paper. It does the work. And then, also had an alternate um, piece. Oh, I think I did. Yes, I did. So then I decided to use the scene that I put on the inside. Put it on the outside. And you probably just have to play with it to figure out where you want to put your sentiment. I don't think I want to cover up the... Uh, reflection there and then on the inside it was a lighter so that was just uh, some extra paper that I had oh I'll show you I'll show you and one more card All the pictures that I have taken, I changed it. Saturday when I was working on getting these done, oh, there's my early espresso. I decided it looked a little bare, and I added those branches. I think I cut extra. Let's see, did I stamp? Pool party. It's kind of an unexpected color for Christmas, but this paper, I tell you, this paper is just lovely. So I have a piece of early espresso cardstock. Like I said, those cutting instructions will be in your PDF. I'm not going to try to tell you what they all are. So I'm using uh, another piece of the paper. That mounted. Trying to do some of the work ahead of time, but you can't really do too much of it. I'm doing all right on time. Don't want to bore you to death. But if you get this hard class to go, you're going to want the instructions. So you can skip. Like if you start with the first card and decide you want to do the last card, we'll just fast forward through the video. Do them in whatever order you want to. And this one is mounted. Mm. Maybe to take it over a little bit. Yeah, I don't like that. Put it down some. There we go. I want it centered. So, let me show you how that's made. We're doing uh, Wishing You a Season of Cheer. And let's stamp that and get that done. And it's in early espresso. Clean this off. And 
end. You see the ribbon that's on there? It's really nothing special. But how I like to do it is I put a few strips of my tape runner on the back. And that kind of sticks it in place. I can do, oh, so I can do the weavy back and forth how I want to. I mean, you don't want it to be so big that it takes over the front. But it adds some sparkle to it. Come on now. Stuff. Kind of like that. And I cut it long on purpose so I would have some extra to play with. Then what I do when I put my dimensional on it, I'll put the dimensional half on and half off. This is real thin ribbon, so it's not going to make it um, wonky. That's a, a good technical term, but it's not going to make it look tilted or anything. That's all I need. Go ahead and stick this on wherever you want. I had a card class today and I just turned those ladies loose. I'm like, they're your cards. If you don't like the way mine is, feel free to alter it. Put it in a different place. So I had already stamped. This one is in crumb cake. This one is in early espresso. I just kind of felt like it needed something. It was fine the way it was. But I changed it. I think you guys are getting used to that by now. Well, she's changing it again. And that just shows when you make yours, that gives you the freedom then to... Um, Make some changes. And on this one, I did put snowflakes. You don't really have to. On the inside, I put a Merry Christmas. That was out of... Um, I did not write it down. It'll be in your instructions, though, of where that Merry Christmas came from. Might have been hope and peace. It is. It's hope and peace. And I don't have it right here in front of me. But I was going to show you. You know, you end up with pieces of designer series paper left. So use them. And this one is going to be a little bigger. But I'm going to show you a tip about that. I'm just not going to put my adhesive all the way down. I am going to put it over here on the edge of it. See that and I'm not on camera. And then I'll turn it over and I can use the edge of the paper as a guide to trim that off. Look, how how cute is that? So you may notice the insides are not the typical four by five and a quarter. I think they're three and three quarters by five. Because you can get five per sheet. <laughs> kind of a silly reason, isn't it? So look at that. You know what I think I will do with these snowflakes? Oh, I got defects. <laughs> oh, I told you I had defects. I think I'm just going to use the gold ones. To add some sparkle. Where did I put it on that one? Two of this size. About right there. I think those show up better than the white ones. Can you see the white ones? There's one there, one there, one there, and then the gold ones. I don't think it competes with the ribbon. That ribbon is just the prettiest. All right. Well, those are the three cards in my horse and sleigh card class to go. 
like I said, I will put the link for uh, my blog so that you'll have more information. It's a $35 minimum online order using the host code, and I will put that. I just uh, don't take the time to do that beforehand. And if you order more than $50, you'll get the roll of the glitter organdy ribbon, I believe is what it's called. Oh, actually, I got one right here. Uh, glittered organdy ribbon. Yep. Or a package of the snowflakes. One or the other with your $50 or more order. So that's all I have. The ordering is open until Friday the 11th. I will uh, send out the kits Monday the 14th because I have extra supplies on hand. So if you have any questions, please let me know. In the meantime, thanks for joining me, and I hope you stay cool. Thanks. Bye.